Hi, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Today we're smoking beef back ribs. Well, we're here for part three of season three of Hardcore Barbecue. And we're doing something we've never done on video before, and I did never think I would do it, and let me explain why. So these are beef back ribs, and I get asked about them all the time. You guys know that I think a beef rib, traditional plate ribs, short ribs, one, two, three, A ribs, the big, thick dino ribs, I think that's the king of all barbecue. And every time I post something about it, there's always questions like, where do you get those? And then people jump in the comments talking about beef back ribs. Full disclosure, this isn't something I normally do. I've cooked it, um, but I'll explain to you why. And then actually, I've kind of changed my mind about them a little bit, so that's why we're here doing a video on this. But number one, it's very inexpensive. This is from Costco, and it was $7.23, and you can see it's huge. Um, so it's, it's really, really cheap, and you can get these at any store. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this open while I'm telling you some other reasons I decided that, that I would do this. Normally I have this already cut out of the package. I don't wanna waste any of your time. That's just my style. But I really thought, man, I need to show y'all just how cheap these are. Um, and I'm gonna tell you my epiphany that I had and why I finally decide, decided to start doing this. Okay. So what is this? If you don't know, Effectively, this is the bottom of a rib roast, right? This comes from the loin. So if you looked at it this direction, if you're cooking a big old bone-in prime rib at Christmas, this is underneath it. So what the butcher is generally doing is when they remove that ribeye off of here, the big ribeye comes off, it could be cut into steaks, it could be cooked whole to a prime rib. But what they're doing is they're, they're cutting this right next to the bone on purpose to maximize the meat you know, in the ribeye. So normally there's a whole lot of what you call shiners. Shiners are exposed bones. When you buy pork ribs, you try to avoid uh, thin meat where they're shiners because as you cook it, it's going to pop through generally. So it's gonna be very prevalent on this cut. But here's why I really decided this is something I ought to do. Well, number one, it's been asked for 8 million times. So it's a thing. And uh, Meat Church YouTube channel is like a visual cookbook. So we wanna have everything that you would wanna cook on here. But secondly, I just changed my perspective. My perspective had been, this is the bottom of the prime rib. Well, then I thought, why not just treat this like a rack of ribs? I know that sounds really stupid and I'll just admit, you know, my Southern education fails me often. So um, I'm just telling you, once I said, let's treat this like a rack of pork ribs, then I really like it for $7.75 and let's get after it. Plus I feel like Fred Flintstone would like really approve of this. And we need it in our hardcore barbecue series. We'll put a card up here for that, but that's where we've, we've got beef ribs, pork ribs, brisket, brisket on a pellet grill, Alabama white sauce chicken, pork belly burn-ins, barbecue meatloaf. The barbecue classics are all in the past two seasons of that, so be sure to check that out. So let's jump into this. I'm gonna make it very, very simple. I'm gonna start with a slather. Now, a lot of times I put mustard on beef but today I'm actually gonna put a little Worcestershire sauce. Use what you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this over and over in my recipes lately. My recipes are simply a guide and something that works and is delicious, but make the flavor profiles whatever you desire. So use what you want. Also, I'm, I am using my friend Bear's W sauce. Um, a lot of you all know about this by now. It's insanely popular. Uh, this is not your mother's Worcestershire sauce. It's insanely delicious and it will add a really nice flavor element. Um, you don't have to use that. You can use regular Worcestershire sauce. You can use mustard. You can use nothing. So do what you want to do. Um, I'm also not peeling the membrane on these. You probably already noticed that. And why is that? I peel the membrane on pork ribs. I do not peel it on beef ribs. And for the same reason, I'm not going to peel these. The reason being, um, there's not a whole lot here. And that membrane is actually helping keep this together. So that's that's my preference on this, but if you want to pill it, go ahead. We're going to go Holy Gospel. So I usually use my Holy Cow. Holy Gospel is a Southwestern all-purpose. It's a mix of my Holy Cow beef rub, which is mostly salt and pepper, and my all-purpose rub, the Gospel. Uh, it's got a little sweetness to it, but I'm purposely trying to add a little sweet to this. It's not going to be too sweet, don't worry. And I'm going light on the backside, or average. But I always say use whatever seasonings you guys want. 
I'm just gonna kind of pat this in with my hand that I just cleaned. Oh well. Actually, I'm trying to incite the glove police because this is my house and my video, not a restaurant. And I'm gonna seize, season probably a little more liberally, I would say, up on the top here. And while I do this, I don't spend enough time talking about our rubs, so I'll just go ahead and do it. Our rubs are the freshest in the industry. If you order from eatchurch.com, they've been in a bottle just a couple days, and that is always the case. Definitely buy local when you can. We've got a dealer locator on meatchurch.com, and that's where you get all this awesome merch as well. The good thing about Holy Gospel, it's got a really beautiful color, and when I've done this before, you guys will see this is going to cook down to be this like super gorgeous color in the end. So I'm going to let this sit here. I always like to let things adhere at least 15 minutes. I always say, if you have an hour, let it sit an hour, or with big cuts, do this the night before. Put it in a pan, wrap it up, put it in your fridge, and then cook the next morning. I'm going to give this 15, 20 minutes to adhere, and then I'll be back. So the seasoning is nice and adhered. You guys can see the moisture here, which is just uh, the seasoning pulling the moisture out of the meat. And it looks beautiful already. That's one of the reasons I love the gospel and holy gospel. This looks delicious, and it's still raw. Um, I didn't have to do any trim. I'm just throwing these on. So here we go. Let's go over to the smoker. So today we're running my mill scale 94 gallon offset 250 degrees with post oak. That's just a preference thing. You can replicate my recipes on any type of cooker you have. Pellet grill, Kamado grill, indirect setup on um, you know a kettle, whatever you want. Heck, you could cook these in your oven. It's just not nearly as fun that way. 250 degrees, you know, just mill the road temperature. When you're running an offset, if you go a little lower, a little hotter, no big deal. I'm just trying to average 250 degrees. And you can use a lot of different woods. That's kind of regional and personal to a lot of people. I'm using post oak because that's the central Texas way and that's what style of barbecue I cook. But hickory, pecan, mesquite would all be great. Or if you want a lighter flavor, roll with a fruit wood. So let's put them in the smoker. Now what I'm gonna do is I like to go this direction. Um, I've got a fire block here just so the heat doesn't blast them. The reason I lay the ribs in this direction is so that when the heat comes across in this way, it's just honestly they're cooking nice and even. A lot of offsets are hotter near the edges, so be mindful of that. That's why I'm right in the middle, depending on what type of cooker you have. We're just gonna let these roll. I know it's gonna take at least two hours. I'm gonna monitor color along the way. If you feel like you need to spritz, you can with apple cider vinegar. I'll see y'all back here in a little bit. Well, we've been cooking the ribs for right at two and a half hours. I spritzed them one time along the way. I only spritz if I think something's starting to look a little bit dry. Uh, moisture is the enemy of bark, so just keep that in mind if you choose to spritz. I use cider vinegar myself. You can use water or whatever liquid you want. I wouldn't spritz that much. It's kind of like only if you feel like you need to, basically. But I've laid out a couple pieces of foil because I'm going to wrap in foil. Woo! They look pretty. Super pretty. I mean, beautiful mahogany color. That's the visual cue you're looking for. When, when they look like, hey, that's a great color, then I'm ready to wrap. I'm wrapping for two reasons. One, to protect that color, to keep them from getting too dark. And secondly, um, foil will speed up the cook process, and I'm hangry. I'm not putting anything in the wrap, but this is a point where you guys can do what you want. You know, if you've got something that you want to wrap with, you want to put some butter in it, sauce, whatever, then you, you obviously can. I like two pieces of foil when I wrap, just in case you poke a hole in it. Um, any sort of fat that kicks out jus, then you know that will help this braise as it cooks. I'm going right back in the mill scale, same temperature, and I'm just gonna let it ride and just look ahead. I'm actually gonna sauce these at the very end. So I'm trying to take these just over 200 degrees. I'm trying to take them to tender, which is probably gonna be just over 200 degrees. So I'll sauce in the last few minutes of the cook, and I'll see y'all back here then. We've been a couple more hours in the foil. I've been temping them. They're nice and tender, so I'm going to bring them out. I realized, I don't think I mentioned in the previous state, I showed the color. Uh, when I wrapped, I was nearly, I was basically called 170 degrees. So I wanted the visual cue, but for those of you wondering, 170 degrees internal, thick part of the meat in between the bones, and we were good to go. But let's check these out. Well, I'm telling you, they're not going to be nearly as pretty now. So a couple more hours in this foil package and there's some serious bone protrusion. 
at this point where they are they are sticking out there now but i mean look at that this was a serious shiner they've held together pretty good but i want to pick this up and show you guys something i'm wearing insulated gloves by the way i'm really glad i left the membrane on because there ain't a whole lot there without a membrane i think these would fall apart um, in your hand but I always say instant ring thermometer, number one tool in your cooking arsenal. So in between the bones where it's really thick, I wanna get, you know, you, you wanna first just feel, don't look at the number. And it's just like a toothpick in a cake. There's nothing there. Uh, but we're 200 degrees right there. Out here when you get further, they're gonna be higher. 205, it's hot. I probably should have sauced a few minutes earlier, but that's okay. We'll make it work. So I wanna add a barbecue sauce. And a lot of y'all are gonna be like, man, Texas is not a sauce state. What are you doing? Um, I'm treating these like pork ribs, so I'm gonna sauce them. I'm gonna use my buddy Meat Minch's Womp Sauce. It's my favorite barbecue sauce in the world, out of Kansas City. Super good. It's pretty thick, but man, it is delicious. You know, I've been using this since day one. So I'm just gonna apply this sauce onto the ribs, and then I'm gonna put them back on the pit just to let the sauce tack up for 10 minutes. Bring them back out here for y'all to see, and. I'm gonna jump in and eat them because they smell epic. All right, that looks good to me. So back on the pit we go for 10 minutes. All right, let's pull these ribs off the pit. They look sexy as hell. As sexy as $8 can look. All right, those look really good. I'm gonna go get myself a hand cramping cold beer, let these cool off, and we're gonna cut into them and see how we did. Found my Fort Worth craft beer, my Montana Knife Company chef knife. It's time to get into this. I'm gonna cut way down here on the end, full disclosure, so I can save these for pretty pictures. All right, here we go. Golly, these are tender. All right, these bones hook big time. Let me cheat this over here. Little, little awkward hook of the bones there. Good Lord. That's a meaty rib. Yeah, it's really thin, but you can see like super, super duper smoky here. That's like almost 100% smoke ring. All right, let's jump in here. My God. I have more tender than your mother's love right there. Damn. And I ain't mad at it. In fact, dude, I may petition Texas to become a barbecue sauce state because that's freaking good. Thanks, Mitch, your sauce. Next level. All right, this may be the best $7.73 I've ever spent in my entire life. I actually don't know why these aren't more of a thing. Uh, maybe because they can be so thin. Uh, I should have said in the beginning, sometimes when you go buy beef back ribs, they're tiny. Like my local HEB has like, they're like half this size or maybe even smaller. We picked out some really big ones at Costco Business in Dallas when we when we bought these, but um, I'm gonna make these at barbecues this summer. I'm uh, I think I found a new thing that I actually like. So I'm admitting I was wrong when I previously said that nobody has any business really making these. I, that's not exactly what I said. I just wasn't really interested in making them personally. But these are really freaking good. So again, they're going in the hardcore hardcore barbecue playlist. This will make like video number. 20 i think out of three seasons so you guys check that out and stick around for the wrap up just when you think our videos are over i'm going to come back about a week from now and shoot a one to two minute just post mortem how'd i feel about it um when my whole crew tastes this stuff and eats it later what did they think did i leave anything out or anything like that so be sure to like and subscribe uh, we're trying to bring you the most simplistic straightforward how-to outdoor cooking videos on youtube we'll see y'all next week Welcome to the wrap up where we discuss kind of our 
thoughts and reflect back on the video that we shot a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I love that I was finally able to cook something and admit near the end that I was kind of wrong on um, my previous view or perspective on that particular cut because Kirk, our camera guy, uh, made a point to me. He said, you know, it was under eight bucks and you got the same beef rib taste that you'd get on monster beef ribs. So say you want to make like our, uh, our beef rib taco, which is a really popular recipe on meatchurch.com. This would be a way that you could do that on a budget. Same super beefy, tender taste, just not as thick basically. Um, you can peel the membrane at the very end so that if you're eating them individually, you don't have to kind of fight through that more thin meat with the, with the big membrane on there. Definitely leave it on during the cook because as I said, it's about the only thing holding it together. But um, you guys have been crushing our spring merch drop. So if you dig this stuff, definitely check it out at meatchurch.com. And thanks y'all all so much for being here. Uh, we'll see you guys next week.